What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it is your average programmer here back again with another video and today we're going to be talking about the dictionary collection class. Now this class pertains to many different languages. This class can be used in or this object can be used in many different languages. But today we're going to be working in C sharp to code this up and feel free to work in any language that you'd like. Again, as I said, this object works in many different languages. So if you work in a different language, such as JavaScript or Java or Golang, feel free to use this. Feel free to follow along with me as I code this. I'm going to be coding in C sharp, but you can code in whatever language you want. I'm going to be jumping into Visual Studio and we're going to be working on live examples together. So let's go ahead and jump into this presentation. What is a dictionary? Dictionary is a generic collection that stores key value pairs. Now you can think of a collection as basically something that holds a series of values such as a list or an array, for example. An array hold, can hold a series of, it can be integers, it can be strings, it can be any data type. So that is what a collection is. Now a generic collection basically allows whatever, whatever class or collection that you're working with to work with any type we can think of a list, for example, a list in C sharp, a list you can pass in any type into the list and you can store any values with that list within that list. So this is what a generic collection is. As you can see, a generic collection is denoted by this uppercase T. We've got a key and a value. Now you can think of a dictionary as an actual dictionary. Let's take an actual dictionary, for example. When you want to search for a word or a definition of a word for an actual dictionary, in order to find the definition for the word, you have to have the word. Let's say the word uh, car. Let's say we want to look for what a car is. We don't know what a car is, apparently. Let's say we want to look for what a car is. In order to find the definition for a car, if we need to have the actual word, which is the key in this case. Car is the key because that's the key we want to pass in and we want to find the value for that key. So we want to find the value for car. So in order to find the value for car, we would pass in car into the dictionary and then we would search through the dictionary in the C section, in the C section, and eventually we would come across the definition for car and that would be the value. So in order to get the value of the key that we pass in, we must first have the key. We can't get the value if we don't have the key. So that's basically what a dictionary is. I want you to think of it as an actual dictionary, but it's much more flexible than that. All right, so T key and T value are data types. So these two things you see right here are data types. You can pass in any types you want. They can be a combination of different types or they can be the same types. All they are, are value types. The reason, again, as I said, it's a generic collection, which means you can pass in any data type into either of these parameters. So as I said before, it's similar to an actual dictionary. If you want to find the value of something, you would first need the key and you would use the key to find the definition of it, which is the value. As you see here, the word that we want to search up, let's say car is the key. So car is the key. And the value or definition is the definition of car, which is the value. All right, so let's move to the next slide. These are ways that you can initialize a dictionary. Here's the first way. We can initialize a dictionary using the indexer syntax, which is very common with arrays. With arrays, you would see this square bracket that you would use, or you would use a square bracket to find the value of the element at a specific index, right? But in this case, we're actually using the uh, the brackets to pass in the key. So let's start up here first. We've initialized our dictionary. This is the initialization syntax. So we've initialized it. We are going to pass in a string and an int. Remember, as before, we had t key, t value, and I said that all they were are data types. You can see it right here. String is the key. And int is the value, which means that we are using a string to find an integer. And in this case, we're using a string, which is the name of the person to find how old they are or their age. So this is the name of our dictionary, ages of people. 
and we are using indexer syntax. So we are using the square brackets to pass in the key and we're using the equal sign to assign the value to that key. So we've got Tom over here who's 19 years old. We've got Michael 27 and we've got Mary 79. Again, this inside of the square brackets is the key and the after the equals operator is the or after the assignment operator is the value. So we're assigning this value to this key. So if we were to just see console.write line ages of people and then pass in Sarah, we would get the value 45. So here's the second way you can use it or we can initialize a dictionary. And this is with the collection initializer syntax, which isn't very often used, but it's just another way to initialize it. And you can feel free to choose any way that you'd like to initialize it. But my favorite is the object initializing syntax. And I'm going to be getting to that very shortly. So with the collection initializer syntax, you can see it's a bit more convenient than having to write out the entire name and then passing in the key inside of square brackets and then assigning a value to it. All we have to do is open up a curly brace or open up a pair of curly braces and pass in the key, which is a string, and then the comma and then the value. We don't have to use any equal sign or anything else. Just open up a pair of curly braces, pass in the key, which is a string, and then the value, which is an integer. And now, object initializer syntax. Almost similar to array or indexer syntax, but we drop the variable name. So we don't use the variable name. We just use the square bracket notation. We pass in the key inside of the square brackets and we assign a value to it. So let's jump into the next slide because I want to get to Visual Studio and actually show you some live examples. I don't want to bore you too much with this PowerPoint, but I just want you to understand the fundamentals and um, how a dictionary works. The benefits of using a dictionary. The first benefit of using a dictionary is that it is flexible. So let's go back to the previous slide. As you can see here, we've stored these values inside of the dictionary. So we've predefined the dictionary to have these values, these keys and value pairs, these key value pairs. But what we can do is use different methods of the dictionary to add more key value pairs into the dictionary. So it's not a set, um, it's not a set object. It's not like an array where we have to have a specific value at compile time. We can change the value at runtime. The value is completed at runtime, excuse me, not at compile time. So we can add as many as we want into this object, as many key value pairs into this dictionary as we want, which is what makes it flexible and very cool to use and very beneficial. The second is that it is reusable. The second benefit of using a dictionary is that it is reusable. So, as I said before, we are not relegated to using only certain data types. We can use any data types. We can pass in any data types. We can pass in custom data types if you want. We can pass in objects and we can pass in anything we want. I kept repeating the same thing, but you should get it. We can pass in any kind of data types you want. We could have used int first. We could have used string second. But then again, we've had to change the key value pairs over here as well. But it's just to show you that it is reusable. We can use it with any set of data types. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio. All right. I've already created my, my setup, my project, just so I could save some time and not waste yours. So let's go ahead and define a dictionary. Let's say, dictionary string comma key oh shoot sorry about that guys that was my mistake string and int we're back don't worry I'm gonna call this ages of people Right now, let's say equals a new because we are initializing it. Let's 
So let's add some new people here. Bob. Rose. 36. Let's have Mary is 43 and don't forget to include the using this is why I'm getting the all these squiggly lines remember this is a generic class so we have to bring in the generic namespace dot that generic all right there we go got Mary and we've got Tom 67 let's add one more person we've got Rachel is 29 all right so we've got our people here. Now let's take a look at the definition of a dictionary. Let's see what it implements, what kind of properties and methods that it has. So you can do this by clicking on the dictionary and then hitting F12. See the definition for a dictionary. All right, here we go. You can see, you can see all the interfaces that it implements, I collection, I enumerable, and so forth. And we can see all the methods here that we can use to work with the elements in the dictionary. And as I was talking about earlier, the add method you can see here allows us to add more uh, key value pairs into the dictionary. So this is the flexibility part of the dictionary. We can use the clear method to delete all the, every item inside the dictionary. And we're gonna use the contains key and contains value. Or it's not contains key, contains value, it's actually the where is it where is it has key has value i believe it was let's see all right all right i do not see it i'm probably overlooking it but Anyway, let's go ahead and use some of these methods and properties. Let's use the add method. So first, let's go ahead and print out all these first. For each, we're gonna use a for each loop. Let's say var uh, person in ages of people. So for each element in the dictionary, we want to console.writeLine. We're gonna use some string interpolation here just to make this a lot prettier. I'm gonna say person dot, and we're gonna grab there or the key. Key. So key is person dot value years old so for each person in here I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so for each person inside of this dictionary we are going to console dot right line the name and then their age so we're gonna say blank is blank years old let's go ahead and see how that works gonna take a sec my apologies all right here we go as you can see we've got Bob right here who is 36 and it says Bob is 36 years old we've got Mary who is 43 Mary is 43 years old so on and so forth 67 and 29 now let's go ahead and use that add method I was talking about let's go ahead and add another person let's say ages of people dot add so the name is going to be, or the key is going to be um, Jefferson. 
and his age is going to be 79. Let's add two more people. So ages, ages of people that add that add. Let's say Alexandra. Let's say she is 36 years old. As you can see, we have these predefined people inside of the inside of the collection class, and we've added two more people, so we should get their name and their value and their age printed out onto the console. As a matter of fact, we do. As you can see, we've got Rachel, which is the last person inside the collection. Then we've dynamically added Jefferson and Alexandra, or we've used the add method to add Jefferson, who was 79 years old, and Alexandra, who was 36. And you can see that right here. So let's go ahead and let's use that contains key and contains value method I was talking about. Contains key and contains value. Let's read a quick description of it. It says it determines whether the dictionary class that we have contains an element with a specified key. And the same case for the value. So let's go ahead and delete that. So let's say that right line. And we can already see how powerful the dictionary is, especially when we make use of its methods. So let's say ages of people, and this is gonna return a Boolean. So it's gonna say true or false that contains key Let's pass in a key, let's say, let's pass in uh, Ashley. Ashley's not in there, so we should get false. Oh, sorry, typed in false. We pass Ashley. So we've used the collection and we've called the contains key method on it. And we've passed in a certain key, which is not in the dictionary, so we should get a false printed out onto the console. As a matter of fact, we do false because Ashley is not a key inside of here. Now, if we pass in a correct key, let's say Tom, we are going to get true because Tom is in our dictionary. And you can do the same thing with the value method. It contains value, let's say the age 100. No one in our dictionary is 100 years old, so we should get a false. And we get a false. Now if we pass in 29, Rachel is 29, so we should get a true back. Oops, I forgot this last parenthesis. Parenthesis. And as a matter of fact, we do get true. So there you go. As you can see, a dictionary is super powerful, especially when you make use of all these properties and methods that it contains. Now, I do not have time to go through all these properties and methods, but it would be super cool for you guys to, or super informative for you guys to take a look at all of them and see what you can do with them. Now, in the very next video, we're actually gonna be creating an application using most of these methods, using a dictionary just to show you how you can uh, implement a dictionary into a real world application. We're gonna create an application, an employee management system using a dictionary. So without further ado, I'm going to start recording the next video and hope you guys like this one. Hope you found it useful and formal. Again, you can go ahead and use all these methods. You can try and test them out however you'd like. You can make small applications with them. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make a, an employee management system using a dictionary. If you liked it, please hit a like. If you want to stay tuned for more for the next video especially, please be sure to subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.